What up, everybody? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit me up on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. We could talk ball over there. I want to interact with more Giants fans on Twitter. So give me a follow, at MarshallGreen underscore. We got a mailbag in today's show. Let's get into it. Basil Champ with a $5 super chat. We appreciate it. What do you think about the devaluation of the safety position? Also, imagine how much we have to pay Andrew Thomas after the Tunsil contract. You're 100% right, and I'll start with the bottom part. Andrew Thomas is probably going to be the highest paid tackle in the National Football League when he and Joe Shane and his representation sit down and they work on a contract extension. I would bet that they're going to start negotiating this summer. I bet the same co goes for Dexter Lawrence. I think they're going to try to get a deal done with both those guys pretty soon here. Uh, just keep the, the cap health good and in a good spot. Uh, the devaluation of the safety position is real. You saw, obviously, Jesse Bates get a lot of money from the Atlanta Falcons, but every other safety that's really good in free agency didn't get more than $8 million. It was really a range from Chauncey Gardner-Johnson getting $8 million to Julian Love getting $6 million with the Seattle Seahawks and then everybody in between. Um, I feel like nobody really got overpaid just dr drastically in NFL free agency this year. I don't know if there was an owner's meeting saying we're not going to overpay people. We're not going to pay B-level free agents A-level money anymore. But it was definitely interesting to see it unfold. And I think you're seeing Odell Beckham, a guy, uh, kind of suffer from that as well. The wide receiver market, I thought, was extremely low as well uh, during the free agency week one period. Thank you for the super chat, Basil. Aunt Ben Rod said Giants need to trade a second and third round pick for Mike Evans. I'd honestly say no, and not that I don't think Mike Evans is good, not that I don't think Mike Evans wouldn't be the number one receiver, or that he wouldn't make this football team better, but are the Giants a Mike Evans away from winning a Super Bowl? I would say no, and for that reason alone, I don't want to sacrifice a second and third round pick for him, for a guy that's 30 years old who probably had his best seasons behind him, and also, you'd have to give him a lot of money going forward, probably would want a new contract. And I think the Giants want to continue to build through the draft. You, see, you heard Joe Shane talk about that so often when he took over as a general manager last offseason, replacing Dave Gettleman. And he's, he's built through the draft, but he also made a trade for a tight end. He also signed a couple of players this offseason. I think he wants to get back to the roots of what he believes is, is the formula for, for building a Super Bowl contender year in and year out. And that's through the draft. And that's why I don't think the Giants are going to make another Big, big trade. And Ben, we appreciate it. I think Mike Evans is great. I just don't know if Joe Shane's going to make another trade. Johnson, you, my man, with a $5 super chat. What would you offer OBJ? What's the sweet number between $4 million and $20 million? Hashtag Bears Nation. Hashtag F. Marsh F. Rowley. Um, so there's a report that a team offered Odell Beckham Jr. $4 million. He refuted the reports that he's asking for $20 million. I think it'd probably take anywhere from six to seven million dollars per year to get a deal done with Odell Beckham Jr. Reports came out that he was looking for a long-term deal. I don't think that's in the cards for OBJ. I think he's going to have to take a one-year prove-it year, uh, prove-it deal. I think one year, five, six, seven million dollars could get it done. I think the Giants may have been the team that offered him one year, four million dollars. To be quite frank with you, um, Odell special. I don't think the Giants are going to make a move on him unless he accepts that $4 million, $5 million deal. Giants have their price point, and I think Joe Shane is a stiff negotiator and not going to budge on his price. What would I offer OBJ? One year, $5 million with incentives that can get it up to $10 million. That's the deal that I'd offer OBJ. I wouldn't offer him more than a one-year deal, especially not with a lot of guaranteed money. I want to ask all the real ones out there, though, right now. Do you want the Giants to sign Odell Beckham Jr.? What do you think? What do you think? This is a hot topic right now to, between a lot of Giants fans. I still do think they need a number one wide receiver. I still think they need more talent at the receiver position. Signing Paris Campbell and Darius Slayton to short-term deals doesn't mean, and, and Sterling Shepard doesn't mean you still don't need wide receivers. You don't pass on a wide receiver at 25 that you think can be legit because you have Sterling Shepard on a one-year deal and uh, Darius Slay, Slayton on a two-year deal as well as Paris Campbell. Could it be OBJ? Type OBJ for yes or no BJ. No BJ for no. Nicholas, my man, trade for Jerry Judy 
third and a fourth next year. I'd say no again on a trade for Jerry Judy. There were rumors and reports that came out from Pat Leonard that the Giants were extremely interested in trading for Jerry Judy at the NFL trade deadline. Um, I don't even think a third and a fourth really gets it done for Jerry Judy. You saw Chase Claypool go for a second round pick. That's been another disaster, but it's just really the start of his career and tenure with the Chicago Bears. I like Judy. I don't love him, and I have to love a wide receiver to give him a third and fourth round pick. If I'm trading for a wide receiver, I need them to be a bona fide, proven number one wide receiver. I think Judy could be that guy, but he's not been that guy yet in his NFL career. And he's also a guy that's going to need a contract extension coming pretty soon. What he's been, like three years? So he's, or four years? Three years, four years? His rookie deal is going to end up being over pretty soon, either at the end of this year or next year. I Meaning you have to pay him money. He's probably worth it, but I'd rather just go out and draft a receiver in the in the third or fourth round instead of drafting uh, Jerry Judy right now. Swift, with us retaining Slayton, Hodgins, and signing Campbell, do you see us taking linebacker or corner in the first round or possibly a trade down? I said a second ago, but Slayton, Hodgins, and Campbell doesn't take you out of the need for the wide receiver position. Whereas I think paying a guy um, like you did on the defensive side of the ball and Bobby Okereke, I think that does take you out of the need for a linebacker in round one. You gave this guy four years, $40 million. I think that takes you out of wanting to draft a linebacker in round one. I still think you're looking at either a corner, uh, a wide receiver, or an interior offensive lineman with pick number 25. And I like what you brought up. I think a trade down is definitely a possibility for Big Blue. If the Giants feel this is more of a deeper draft than a top-heavy draft and they can get the same guy at 25 that they can get at 36, I think a trade down would be in store for Joe Shane. Kind of recoup some of those picks that you gave up in that Darren Waller trade, get more throws at the dartboard and try to nail those picks. I think a trade down is definitely something the Giants will think about. I think you still need a receiver. I think the three positions of need are still receiver, corner, and interior offensive line. Good question, Swift. I really appreciate that. We'll get to more questions coming up here in a second. But first, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because we are getting closer and closer to 26,000 subs here on the channel. Before free agency last week, uh, one of my coworkers told me that this channel, Giants Now, was at 6,000 subscribers before free agency opened. We've gained 20,000 in the past uh, year. Let's keep the ball rolling. When the Giants make a move, we make a video videos every day on Big Blue. Hit that sub button, and let's freaking ride. Fabrice, my man, when should we address our secondary issues? I think in the draft is where you're going to look with that. And I don't even think that you're really all that thin at the, at the cornerback spot. If we have that depth chart in there, Roly, I'd like to pop that up if possible. I was, I've been a guy that has said the Giants need – to go in, add more people to that cornerback depth chart. But I kind of like the, the the spot that it's in right now. Obviously, I'd like a more talented player in that position. But I do think first round, second round, third round for Brees could be a spot where you look at the cornerback spot and try to get a you know a blue chip prospect. I don't think you're going to go out and pay a wide receiver, excuse me, a corner. I thought Marcus Peters could be someone the Giants were interested in. Those ties back to Baltimore with Wink Martindale. I just think that ship is kind of sailed. Unless you're going to get Marcus Peters on a cheap one-year, $3 million deal for prove-it money. I wouldn't be against bringing a guy back like Fabian Morrow, who played really, really well for Big Blue last year. You do got to get better at this room, but I don't think it's as big of a need as some people are talking about. A, a Dory Jackson, we know he is a special outside corner, and he was great for the Giants last year. Darnay Holmes. He's a solid slot, not a great slot. You could definitely look to upgrade that slot position. Aaron Robinson, a lot of people forget about him. I'm even a victim of forgetting about Aaron Robinson. I thought that he played really, really well in year one for the Giants. Suffered that season-ending injury early in the season. Um, and then you got Cordell Flott you drafted in the third round. Nick McLeod played some good snaps for you. Yes, you still need another corner, but I don't think it's... By all means, you have to draft a corner in round one. I also like uh, Rodarius Williams a little bit. He's not great. I think he's a good depth piece. Um, I'm looking for Flott to take that next step this year and be a starter on this team. Pizza. Paziza. Pazisi. Pizza, pizza. Can't win without O-line or D-line. Money well spent. 
I agree. You went in the trenches, and I thought that game against the Eagles showed you that you were a team that had to improve inside the trenches. Uh, they dominated you at the point of attack on the line of scrimmage, and you really added a lot of depth to your defensive line. Raheem Nunez Rochas. He's a player that a lot of people didn't know about that I didn't know about. Uh, but the, the more film I watch on him, the more I talk to people in Tampa, the more I just just di take a deep dive into Nacho, a.k.a. Nunez Rochas. He's a good player, and he's a great – he's a pro. He is a pro. When you needed another pro on this defensive line, now you got him and Jihad Ward. I think you still need another edge rusher. You could look at the draft at that spot. Maybe you got like Leonard Floyd in free agency. Um O-line, you haven't really improved it yet in free agency. But remember, Marcus McKeithen, he's coming off a season-ending injury. As well as Joshua Azudu, the two North Carolina interior offensive linemen. You're, I think Joe Shane is expecting for Azudu to be that starting left guard for this team. He was a top, he was a third-round pick last year, top 100 pick. Year two of a, of a player that was drafted in the top 100 of the draft. You're expecting them to be a starter. And if you get Azudu to be a reliable starter for this team, that's going to be a big, big, big boost for this interior offensive line. I still think they could draft a center as early as round one, definitely in the first three rounds. Grade the Giants' free agency so far. A lot of moves are still to be made. you got to fill out this roster. you got to get to 90 people. I think they're still going to make some moves. I don't expect them to be big money moves, though. But what do you think? Grade what the Giants have done and factor in the Darren Waller trade as well because that's a part of free agency. A, B, C, D, or F. I'd say B+. Plus. I think B+. Plus. I think Joe Shane's done a hell of a job. B+. Plus. Red Wind, my man, is Saquon Barkley leaving the Giants? No, he is not leaving the Giants as of now. What we're seeing, um, no, he's going to play under the franchise tag. I expect him to play under the franchise tag. I think a long-term deal could still be on the table for Saquon Barkley, but with the way running backs are being paid right now, I think he lost himself some money, and I think that he should have accepted that deal that they offered him that was reportedly worth $13 million annually. Frank White, my man, with a $5 super chat. As much as I want OBJ, don't think we're going to get another wide receiver in free agency, so which wide receiver is worth moving up in the draft to get, if not, at 25? The only wide receiver I think that is worth moving up for is Jackson Smith and Jigba. He is my wide receiver one. I just like what he does. I think he's the most talented wide receiver in the draft. And I think he has the best tape in the draft. I like that he is an elite athlete when it comes to short area quickness. I think he's got the whole route tree in his bag. And he's someone that has proven that he can get loose after the catch and get upfield and, and get that yak. I like Jackson Smith and Jigba. I don't know if I want to trade up for him, though. Um, and he's not really... Not that he's not an outside receiver, but he's more of a slot receiver than outside. Uh, in this offense, you're going to play all over, and he is 100% capable of doing so. I like Zay Flowers, and I like Jordan Addison at 25. Jackson Smith and Jigba's there. Uh, he, he's going to be a New York Giant. I truly, truly, truly do believe that. I, if I had to rank my receivers, uh, we'll go the first round, guys. I'd go Jackson Smith and Jigba. I would go Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, then Quentin Johnston. Not the biggest fan of Quentin Johnson, six foot two only, six foot three, um, but he doesn't play like it. He's a body catcher, and I think his route tree is limited. He's a good player. I'll be happy if the Giants get him, but he's just not one of my higher rated guys in this draft. Appreciate everybody for tuning in to today's Giants Now video. Love answering questions from the real ones because we're nothing out on this channel without all of you guys supporting every video like you guys do. Appreciate it. If you made it this far in the video, hit that thumbs up icon, and we'll see you later.